A gentleman to see you, Professor. Uh, you have come to help me? Uh, sit down, sit down. I must talk to somebody. Nobody will listen to me. I must have help with my researches. Of course. Even now it may be too late. Too late, do you understand? There is so much to do. Mm. I must have a qualified doctor to assist me. You, uh, you are a qualified doctor. I asked for a qualified doctor. Yes, of course. My work is of the utmost importance for the survival of the human race. Do you believe in evil, Doctor? I, I do not mean evil as it is commonly understood. I mean the existence of evil as a living organism, as a plague, a disease which infects humanity like, like cholera or typhoid, an epidemic slowly spreading until it affects the whole world. Evil is a disease, a disease which can be prevented or cured like many others. Come, come, I will show you. Please. Yeah. Are you are looking at the very essence of evil itself, the isolated bacillus of the most deadly plague of all. But you see, you see with your own eyes, they all see, yet nobody believes. You must believe me. I alone have looked into the face of evil. I alone possess the knowledge of how to combat this, this terrible force which I stand guilty of unleashing upon the world 3,000 years ahead of its appointed time. <sighs> Some people even say that I am mad. Everything is here. Everything is documented. I am a scientist, not a madman. Three years ago, I had just returned from New Guinea, where I'd been searching for the remains of primitive man. 
I brought back with me what I thought would be the most sensational scientific discovery of the century. The complete skeleton of a primitive man, which would revolutionize our ideas of the origin of our species. Right. Start one load. Oh, no. Emily! Penelope, my dear, dear child. Oh, how good to see you again. <laughs> Let me look at my little girl. Yes, I do declare. I do declare you've grown taller. Oh, it's good to see you again. So very good. And so good to be home. Everything the same. Why, even to Martha. Martha, how are you? It's Emily, Father. Emily? Oh, yes, 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 of course. How stupid of me. Emily, nice to see you. Welcome home, sir. Thank you. It's Emily, yes. Waterloo, my old friend. Welcome home, Professor, and well timed. I'm just concluding the final experiment which you suggested in your last letter. Good, good. We have a lot to talk about and much, much to do. Hey, be, be careful, please. That way. Waterloo, take them through to the laboratory, will you? I'll join you immediately. Yes, but take care, please. Whatever you do, don't stand it upright. Keep it horizontal. Oh, no, it's very, very delicate. Oh, it's not really Excuse me, my dear. I must just check with if this specimen has survived the journey intact. Careful. Right now, eh? By the way, what, what did happen to it, Martha and the other servants? I'll explain it all at breakfast. Well, you will be taking breakfast with me, won't you, Father? Oh, yes, yes, of course. We also have a lot to talk about. Give me just a few minutes and I'll be with you. Yes. Put it, put it over there. Careful, don't hit the table with the experiment. Oh, That's right. Over there. Right. Let me just clear the things off the top. Right. Here we go. Yeah, I'll go. It must be worth a few words. What an hour. I've done it. I found it. This is it, my friend. Uh, this will change everything. We'll have university fellowships. Why uh, we'll write books. Uh, might even win the Richter Prize. Uh, Richter Prize, ten thousand uh, pounds. Why, we can have a, a better laboratory, new equipment. I could double your salary. And it's not only us who will benefit, but the whole world. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Come on. Come on. Old skin flint. Oh, him and his Richter Prize. Ten thousand pounds. Cook. Just a moment. Oh, <coughs> pleasure. Thank you, miss. Excuse me, miss. Can your father be taking breakfast with you? Oh, I do hope so, Emily. We have so much to discuss. This was found scientific research to a point I could hardly have credited before I went away. So when he gets in his laboratory, I fancy it will take more than breakfast with his daughter to prize him out. If you hadn't returned this week, Professor, my experiments would have come to a standstill. Oh, that's of little importance now. This is what we must concentrate upon. Any means at our disposal. Fantastic, isn't it? Now. Note the difference between these two skulls. Neanderthal man, primitive, ape-like, they had very, very small brain cavities. Now compare that with this new specimen. Far greater brain capacity. You may inform my father that breakfast is ready, Emily. Yes, miss. Sir? Breakfast is ready now, sir. Hmm? Breakfast, sir. Oh, no, no, Martha. Not just now. Not now. I've been extremely busy. Hmm. Please, miss, your father says he's busy at the moment. Very well. Perhaps you would ask him again in a few minutes. Yes, miss. Thank you. The strange thing is that I found this skeleton in these rocks here. Whereas the remains of Neanderthal man, which I found on my previous expedition, were in this layer here.
Therefore, this new skeleton must be much older than the Neanderthal. Yes. Anything else? But the new one seems to be more advanced. Why, exactly, Waterloo. Which means all our theories of evolution are turned upside down. My discovery proves that there was advanced, intelligent life on Earth far earlier than it has been thought. This is the link that scientists have been searching for. Now, come in. This will revolutionize scientific thinking, Waterloo. Please excuse me, sir. Miss Penelope sent me specially to ask, would you please come and take breakfast with her? Oh, why, yes, yes, of course. Tell her I will join her directly. I'm sorry to have been so long. I'll get you your breakfast. You look after me so well. I'd like to hear what you've been doing during my absence abroad. I trust you have not neglected your music lessons while I've been away. Oh, no, Father. And, uh, just tea, thank you. And all the domestic arrangements have proved satisfactory? I had to dismiss two of the servants, as you may have noticed. Oh, yes. Um, Martha and, uh, oh, why, my dear? We can't afford them, Father. It's been so hard these last 12 months making ends meet, saving pennies here, pennies there. It's been such a strain. What would I do without you, Penelope? Ever since your dear mother died, you've been everything to me. But you won't have to worry any more. This time, my discoveries will bear fruit, I promise you. What is it? You're not unwell? Oh, no, Father. I'll, I'll be all right. Are you sure? Yes, Father. Perhaps you spent too long alone in this house. Now that I'm back, you'll be able to go out again. The two of us together. Just as soon as I've completed my present work. Yes, Father. Excuse me. My dear brother, although this letter will not reach you until your return, I unhappily write to inform you that your wife passed away this morning. Needless to say, I have respected your wishes and have not informed Penelope. Is something wrong, Father? Nothing that need concern you, my child. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Drive on, coachman. Get up there. Naturally, I'm very sorry, Emmanuel, but we must treat your wife's death as a merciful release for you both. There was no improvement towards the end, no. I'm afraid not. We had to continue treatment until the last. Won't you come in? Thank you. Of course, during your absence, we made the appropriate funeral arrangements. Marguerite is buried here in the cemetery, should you wish to visit the grave. Thank you. And Penelope? How is she? I do not imagine she will be unduly disturbed by all this, because she has believed her mother to be dead for many years. When are you going to tell her the truth, Emmanuel? I can't. You know I can't. What do you mean? For so long it's been on my mind that her mother's illness might be hereditary. That it might recur in Penelope. James, you're the authority in this field. Is such a thing possible or am I worrying needlessly? Very soon I hope to be able to answer that. The answers and many others will be in this manuscript when it is published. I'm entering it for the Richter Prize. The Richter Prize? Yes, Emmanuel. Things have changed. It was always you who was destined for great success, whereas I was only the poor, hard-working half-brother for whom you had to put up with. Now it is I who am the success. I intend to win that prize, Emmanuel. 
and the prestige that goes with it. Now, if you will excuse me, I have many matters to attend to. Oh, yes. Uh, your wife's uh, documents, committal papers, death certificate, etc., etc., you will find them all in order. Very great. Uh, one moment. I want to make it quite clear, Emmanuel, that I do not propose to continue to subsidize your ridiculous expeditions to the ends of the earth to prove your lunatic theories about the origin of man. Good day. Lenny's escaped, sir. Escaped? He smashed the door down, knocked the guard out, and got clean away, sir. The lock must have been... Well, get the... after him, man. Sound the alarm. sort of literature. Where did you get it? You have not been out? No, father. I haven't left the house since you were away except to walk in the garden. Then how did you come by this magazine? I found it on a bookshelf. I thought it must have been one of mother's. Your mother's? But I have forbidden you. Yes, father. You have forbidden me to talk about my mother or to mention her name or to enter her room. Don't you understand? I never knew my mother. She died when I was too young to know her. I just thought by reading something that she My had... dear child, my every thought is, is for your welfare. You are my beloved responsibility. I've tried to keep from you anything which might cause you distress. I'm so sorry if I failed. I love you, Father, but I must know about Mother. Can you lock away memories just by locking her room? You must trust me. I do know what is best. Both of us.
Continue with the experiment, Doctor. We'll discuss the conclusions later. Oh, uh, good evening, Dr. Hilda. Give me the keys. I want to see how Lenny escaped. You think you ought to go in there, sir? Should have used this on Lenny. Let's hope we find him before he goes berserk again. Good morning. Morning, sir. Thank you. Carry straight on here. And keep your eyes skinned as you go through those trees. What a mess. Try to clean it, Professor. Hurry! I'm afraid there's no trace of this Linny man in the local area, sir. He might have headed for London. It would help us if we could have a more detailed description of the man, sir. If that's not too much trouble. Of course not, officer. Every one of my patients here is fully documented. Well, here we are. This is the most recent photograph we have of the man. You may keep it if you wish. Oh, thank you, sir. We'll do our best. Well, I only hope your best is good enough, officer. Look at this. 
The morning paper. This institute can do without a scandal of this kind. Well, sir, if I might venture to point out, are you sure your security arrangements are satisfactory? Perfectly satisfactory. I inspected them myself only last night. Oh, thank you, sir. And good day. I thought I'd examine the structure of the flesh tissue. Yes. Can I help you, Professor? I cannot find my volumes on folklore of the New Guinea primitives. I was looking for them last night. Have you seen them? <coughs> Miss Penelope recatalogued the library while you were away. The particular books you want are in the drawing room bookcase. Ah, be a good fellow. Get it for me, will you? Certainly. Yeah. Oh. I return the keys to you, Professor. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, oh, it is. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Oh, excuse Waterloo. me, Miss Penelope. Those volumes on the New Guinea primitives, your father wants them. Now, oh, let me see. Folklore. Let me help you. Thank you. There you are. Thank you. Now, listen to this in relation to what happened last night when I was cleaning the skeleton. It's about the primitive people of New Guinea today who believe that their ancestors were a race of giants who carried on a titanic war between good and evil when the world was created. When the evil one shall be exposed, the Sky Father shall weep. Weep, Waterloo. That means rain, water. Weep for the departure of paradise from the earth. And his tears, water again, do you see? His tears, falling upon the evil one, will give him life. Now that is precisely what happened last night, here in this room. And so the battle between good and evil will continue on the earth. Well, I really don't understand. It all seems rather difficult. Don't you see the parallel? In the normal course of erosion, this skeleton would be exposed on the surface in approximately 3,000 years. By which time, the people of New Guinea should have developed a state of scientific knowledge equivalent to ours. And then, the Sky Father will weep. Rain, Waterloo. Rain, water. And last night, I anticipated that process by 3,000 years. I, I am the White God. I alone hold this tremendous power of good and evil in my hands. If I can control this power, what opportunities are open for humanity? I, with this knowledge, I could, I could wipe evil away from the world. It could be abolished forever. We would have a new paradise here on Earth. It's uh, food for thought. Hey, Waterloo. Outwardly, the flesh looks quite human. But let us look further.
blood cells. They're not ordinary cells. Uh, let's have a look at some of mine. Now, these ordinary human blood cells are completely different, of course. Now, let's see what happens when we mix the two. A bit of mine and a little bit of his. Now, mix them together. Since evil is a disease, it could therefore be possible to immunize man by some form of inoculation. Good, yes, that'll do. Now, theoretically, Waterlow, if a minute quantity of evil serum were introduced into the bloodstream of an individual, that individual should be proof against contamination by the evils of this world for the rest of his or her life. We must prepare a serum from the evil cells and put it to a practical test. Where is Mummy? Why can't I see her? I do want to see her. I don't want your mother's room disturbed. I want her to find it just as she left it.
Dear Penelope, you are everything to me. And since your mother's death, when you were so young, I've tried to be everything to you. My every thought has been for you. You must trust me. I do know what is best for both of us. I prepared a sample of the monkey's blood, Professor. Oh, splendid. Yes. That should have been time enough. Thank you. The serum has formed a protective film around each cell. Now, the question is... Can this protection withstand the forces of undiluted evil? Withstand an attack from the blood taken from the newly formed flesh? I wonder. It can. So far, success, Waterloo. Congratulations, Professor. A new day is dawning for mankind. We'll continue in the morning. Good night, Professor. Good night. This is your mother's room. How dare you? How could you do such a thing? How dare you? Why didn't you tell me about her? Why? You said she was dead. Why? It was Why? your own good. Your own good. All the time. All the time you kept the memory of her alive up here in this room. You never loved me. You never loved your own daughter. You had room only in your heart for her. You never had any left for me. And all the time she was a prisoner. Like me. Why didn't you let me see her? Why? You want everybody to be a prisoner. You wanted her kept a prisoner, locked up in that dreadful place. I am nothing to you.
Oh, no, not Penelope. I won't let it happen to her. Perhaps I should have told you about your mother. I wanted to protect you. I thought it was for the best. know that face anywhere. I can deal with most brawlers myself, but this bloke was a madman. Well, even old Len Gaskell here, he was hiding behind the bar. But it takes a lot to shake old Len. Look at it. I see. Come on, get this place cleared up. Oh, my God. Professor. Professor! What's the matter? Come down here quickly. Please come quickly, sir. What's wrong, man? What's the matter? The serum. Oh, God. Thank God we didn't use it on a human being. Penelope! Traced Lenny, sir, to the east end of London. We think he's still there. It'd be advisable if we could take a couple of your staff with us. Very well. Send the security coach and give the inspector all the help he requires. Yes, sir. Oh, one other point, sir. In view of this man's violent nature, I can't guarantee to bring him back alive. 
Just bring him back, Inspector. Sir. For that one. Now, come on, pay up, otherwise I'm going to call a cop. I've had trouble with your sort before. It's for the gin, ma'am, Lord. And for another. The young lady is with me. Having a very good evening, eh? Perhaps I can brighten it up a little. Oh, come, come, my dear. We don't put our goods on display unless they're for sale, do we? It's my mother's dress. <laughs> I like that. It's very good. We'd better go upstairs and test the quality of the material, eh? Going upstairs. All right, sir. You know the way. even here, do you? Very well. Time you learned a thing or two.
Championship? When I want that sort of thing, I'll ask. <laughs> Get back now, all together, right. Come on again. Ah. Ah. 
No sign of her. No. Can I do anything while you rest? No. No, no, you'd best go home, Mortimer. I'll send a message if I need you. But thank you so much for waiting. reaction. It's impossible to tell whether these lights have any effect at all. Could we be on the wrong track with your electrical wave theory? No, no, I'm convinced I'm right. We've got to make a breakthrough. The experiments on the patients prove nothing. They're already insane. And until you can artificially cause insanity, you can prove nothing. Well, unfortunately, in the state of society as it exists today, we are not permitted to experiment on human beings. Normal human beings. Lenny's dead, sir. There was a woman with him. They brought her here. I've taken a blood test from her. I'd like you to see it. Won't it wait? I think you'd better look at it now, sir. Very well. might be hereditary, that it might recur in Penelope. Is such a thing possible, or am I worrying needlessly? Unfortunately, in the state of society as it exists today, 
We are not permitted to experiment on human beings, nor human beings. Get her inside, quickly. Take her upstairs. Yes, sir. Go on, quickly. Yes. Keep her under constant supervision. Yes, sir. What are you doing in here? Oh, Emmanuel. It would appear that your research is following similar lines to my own. How dare you come spying in my laboratory? There's no reason why we shouldn't pool our resources, is there? What do you mean? Come, come, Emmanuel. There's no need to be so evasive. I happen to know that your experiments have uh, misfired. I don't know what you're talking about. I see you won't listen to reason. Now, I suggest you tell me everything you know. What are those black cells? How do you isolate them? And what association do they have with insanity? I do not know what you're talking about. I must ask you to leave my house immediately. You would have to tell me you know. I could ruin you if the scandal became known. The scandal? Yes, scandal. You would be utterly ruined professionally if it were learnt that you had experimented on your own family. Fortunately for you, however, your daughter was brought to my asylum. Penelope? Where is she now? You say that the black cells only appear in the patients who are capable of extreme violence. Yes, I've taken samples from all the patients. Then it's conclusive. Emmanuel says here that he can only obtain the cells in their pure state from the living tissue formed around the bone. Could that be the bone of the skeleton he talks about? And how do you form living tissue around dead bones? Seems absolute nonsense to me. There's something that he hasn't mentioned in these notes. I've got to get hold of that skeleton somehow. Well, I don't know. There is the question of professional ethics. Oh, indeed, indeed. That is why I shall have to employ someone for whom ethics have no significance.
upset you, Professor.
Everyone gets help! Find him, quick! Oh, <laughs> 
This creature walks upon the earth. Mankind will be engulfed in great disasters. Wars, killing on a far greater scale than ever before. The pestilence of evil is spreading. I alone can save the world. You're going? You're not going to help me? We are helping you, Professor. That's what we're here for. Yes, I agree with you entirely, Dr. Hilden. He's completely insane. The most amazing fantasies. They even involve you. He thinks you're his half-brother. Well, that's quite normal in these cases. I'm a sort of authority figure for them, so naturally I appear in their fantasies. The poor fellow even believes that this patient is his daughter. How long has he been here? Oh, uh, three years, I think. Yes, three years. The year I won the Richter Prize. Hopeless case, I'm afraid. Help me! Oh. Help me! Please help me! 